Hi, I'm Florence Derrick, a major Tim Dot Space Honor Young Ambassador, and today I'm giving a brief talk on DNA. And first, I want to kind of mildly explain what DNA is. DNA is like a code or a recipe or a blueprint inside the nucleus of every living cell in our body. It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and it contains four chemical compounds, often referred to as T, A, T, G, and C. The chemical compounds are arranged in a double helix structure, a bit like two twisting helter-skelter slides going around in opposite directions. Here's one I made earlier. Um, the, this is my double helix structure. The wires represent the double helix. The marshmallows, gingers, and raisins represent the chemical compounds. Some interesting facts about DNA that I didn't really know what to do with them, but decided to put them in here. 1% of your DNA is made up of genes, which is basically all your traits and features that are going to be passed down if you have any children. And, if you stretch out one of your cell's DNA, it would roughly be about 2 meters long. But if you stretched out all of your body's DNA, it will reach to the sun and back over 20 times. 50% of our DNA is the same as bananas. What was that? You got the better half of the DNA? Oh, shut up. 99.9% .9 of our DNA is the same as every other human being on Earth. And all of our differences, like our height, our hair colour, our skin colour, our eye colour, is only 0.1% of our DNA. I'm going to talk a little bit about who discovered DNA for the last couple seconds. DNA was first identified in the 19, 1860s. But the double helix structure was discovered by James Watson and Francis Crick in the early 1950s. The discovery of the helix structure was only made possible by Dr. Rosalind Franklin's work on x-rays as she captured, captured the first images showing the structure. Watson, Crick and another scientist, Maurice Wilkins, who had worked with Franklin, were all awarded, awarded the Nobel Prize in 1962. As it is often the case with women in science, Rosalind Franklin's part in the discovery was not recognised within her lifetime. And only recently, in April 2023, was it acknowledged that she had played an equal part in the discovery. I'm extremely hopeful that women's participation in the field of science will continue to be properly recognised and encouraged. And that's all I've written for the presentation. Well done, Florence. Only very slightly out of time, so congratulations. Great presentation. I love the humour you added in. So, let's go to Steve first for his judging oh, comment. Thank you, Florence. That was a great presentation. Um, I, you know, I would have eaten all the marshmallows and ginger by the time the presentation would have started, so it wouldn't have looked much like a helix. Um, but... What is your opinion on the modification of the genetics of oh. foods, animals, people? What, what do you think about that? I think, I have heard a little bit about genetic modification, that it's, it's got pros and cons. I'll say, you know, you can cure cancer with it, you can find some find the cancer cells, kill them with it. You could make a unborn child run faster than ever and have immunity to a bunch of diseases. But it's probably going to be the start of World War Three at this point. So we're just going to have to have our little differences there. But I think for some people it's probably going to be the way forward. But everybody has their own opinions and that's all I'm going to say on that. Okay. Um, Alex, would you like to go next? Yes, yeah, certainly. I uh, wow, love the presentation. So DNA is is really interesting to me as well. I particularly loved that you made the point that although Watson and Crick have always got all the credit for all of this stuff, as ever, 
there's an awful lot of women in science and not only in science who do an awful lot of very hard stuff and they don't get the credit for those things and i i, I was really really pleased that you made those points and i hope that the world is changing a bit and i definitely think women should get a lot should get the credit they deserve apart from anything else so hopefully things will be better in the future um unfortunately for me steve has stolen my big question about genetic modification so i'll have to come up with something else what about cloning what do you cloning? think about cloning cloning yourself cloning animals maybe as well as cloning people here's a question um we have you know people who eat meat and vegetarians and vegans and many more now what would you think if we could clone meat so that we didn't actually have to kill animals to eat meat we could just grow the meat without there ever being an animal to kill would that be okay or would that be a problem I feel like it feels okay to do that and it would help a lot of people who don't have the proper uh, food requirements but I also think that there is lots of debate about this because um, you would need the first set of meat to clone that would have to go would the meat ever go bad if it was Good cloned point. or would you keep oh. cloning the clones forever on a cycle yeah. cloning dogs i know that's a thing i feel like that would be okay but this is gonna go somewhere i don't want to go too deep into the whole yeah. thing but um cloning people i feel like that would definitely be a problem um it's basically going into the underworld or hell and just say hey i want this one back can i just leave with them um Maybe. But wouldn't it be great if you could clone yourself and your clone could go to school and then you could just work on your own projects? Hmm, I feel like that would cause lots of problems <laughs> because you would not gain the information that your other clone would learn, the other clone could, hmm. you know, grow, that's a, become that's a very good person. Point. Yeah. Imagine if you both joined the same Zoom call, that would be really confusing. Yeah. Wow, you've made me think. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That was a lovely presentation. Fantastic. Best of luck in the future. Do you think that maybe when you're older, you're going to be doing your own research on genetics and also maybe even genetic modification, if that's something that you might be interested in? I'm definitely interested in it. And I feel like at one point in my life, I'm going to be doing that. Not as... I'm going to do this my entire life. I know I'm going to do this. I just have that feeling that somehow I'm just going to get drawn to it and stay there. And then, you know. So well done, Florence. A captivating presentation.